Toby has a question. I'm a long time follower of your podcast and I enjoy listening to it every week. So thank you. You are welcome. It's an honor. I've been using kettlebells for several years now and I've gotten to be proficient with them. After listening to your podcast for so long, I have finally started to learn the Olympic list. Well, good for you. It's funny because so many of my li listeners will learn the Olympic lifts by trying them out with broomsticks and then going to their gym and learning. And yet some strength coaches don't think you can coach this, the Olympic lifts. It's, it's maddening to me. Good for you, Toby. And I've enjoyed learning them. I found in my first class that while my technique was not very good, I did have a good level of strength work and capacity to learn through the two hour class. In your experience, have you found kettlebell work, especially the swing family, to have a good carryover to the Olympic lifts? Boy, yes. I would like to use both, I would like to use both uh, kettlebells and the Olympic lifts moving forwards. Do you have any experience combining the two in a program? Yeah, I do. I do have a lot of experience combining the two. In my own case, once I started doing kettlebells, as I as I told the, the RKC community, uh, it was the game changer for my track and field. I still Olympic lifted. Uh, I was getting over that broken wrist, um, which still, can uh, when weather changes like it did, still nag me. But some of the kettlebell mobility exercises were some of the best things I ever did. Of course, later I came up with the goblet squat. Well, later, before that, but then adapted to the kettlebell. So, yeah, so... <laughs> If you look at my programs like the perfect program, you'll notice that there's an exercise in there where we do goblet squats at the bottom. We put the weight down at the bottom, pick up a stick and stand up with it. It's the goblet squat to overhead squat drill. Um, that is a thing that every single thrower, American football player I coach, wrestler, heck anybody I coach, that's an exercise they learn. Uh, it really destroys some people. They get exhausted doing it. They get exhausted doing it because of the flexibility mobility issues. And one of the things you might have already picked up, Toby, is that when you do the Olympic lifts, flexibility and mobility become a big deal. I hate it when people say, oh, the Olympic lifts are just technique and you got to be, you know, mobile, mobile and flexible. N yeah, that might be true. But I got to tell you, I snatched 314. Just next time you go into the gym, you know, slap three big plates on both sides, pop it up and do an overhead squat with 315 pounds and tell me that there's no strength involved at all. I don't, I can't recommend that. We, I think that would kill people. Um, <laughs> went to a gym one time and when I walked in, the guy goes, hey, do you want to, can you overhead squat 405? N no, no, I wish I could, I couldn't do it. Um, there is a, uh, there is a great benefit in doing the kettlebell swing and doing the Olympic lifts because it teaches that great hinge. When you talk to the great, uh, you know, if you are listen to like the, the Greek Olympic lifters that, during their heyday uh, in the 90s and the early aughts, one of the things they really emphasized was uh, clear, okay, as you drive the, the bar off the floor, so that very first part. I was always taught that you drive your heels into the ground as hard as you could, and you do something like a leg press. Well, they did a very similar concept. And by the way, the Bulgarians with their heels only technique, Russ Nip telling us one time that all the all the pull is is heels, heels, heels. Very similar, but the uh, the Greek lifters would try to think about pushing the knees back. It's the exact same concept because it gets you into that strong, massively strong hinge position. The nice thing about the sw squat, uh, the, pardon me, the swing, is that you get yourself in that hinge position and hinge plank, hinge plank, hinge plank. So if you do that, if you do swings in the warm up for your Olympic lifts, it gives you a very interestingly specific warm up, but it also gets you into that feeling of what you're trying to do. So I coach the uh, Olympic lifts kind of like a bow and arrow technique, I call it, where the chin and the, and the butt are the tips of the arrow. And of course, the bow string is the hamstrings. And what you, well, we're shooting them. The bow and arrow is going this way, okay? So what we're doing is we're trying to stretch those hamstrings so it, boom, snaps you up. The arrow is that, you know, that full tall position, the extension. 
I think the kettlebell swing does a good job reinforcing that movement. I think the goblet squat and the goblet squat into the overhead squat are just phenomenal warm-up movements. If you ever see me lift it a meat, Toby, that is something you'll see me do. The goblet squat into the overhead squat. I mean, I've done it with plates. I've done it with dumbbells. I've done it with my bag one time at a meet. Um, they really didn't have a lot of equipment backstage. Uh, and so I did, I used my uh, gym bag, pushed my knees out, but I was, and I used the women's bar to stand up with uh, just to get, you know, kind of warmed up, lub lubricated. So, oh yeah. Um, now, when you combine them in a program, you, you've got two options here. First off, and I think this is the option I would push for most people who want to go on the platform and compete, is that your warm-up might be a mini Hardstyle Kettlebell Certification. And you can find out more from that brilliant book, Hardstyle Kettlebell Challenge by, hmm, who wrote that? Um, so in your 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 warm-ups for your, your weightlifting, you could do some swings. I would suggest five sets of 15. Uh, 75 won't take very long. Uh, some of that gobble squat into overhead squat. If you do two sets of five or eights or something like that, it would only take uh, a few minutes. It would only take a few minutes to do all of that. It's not necessarily a specific warm-up. It's a general warm-up. But it's specific in the idea, and I think, is that the most important things an Olympic lifter has to do on each and every lift is get into that great hinge position and then snap under into that squat position. You're going to work on both sides of that. From there, you could go right into your snatch, clean and jerk, front squat work, and have a really good workout. Uh, I have done this with the easy strength for Olympic lifting versions. Um, yeah, um, it, it doesn't work perfectly for me, but you know you could do something as simple as I always like to hang for 30 seconds, and then sit at the bottom of goblet squat for 30 seconds, stand up, shake it out. Get those sets of five, uh, 15, 10, 15 reps, five rounds, so 50 to 75 swings, as I noted earlier, and then now go over to the barbell, maybe do some specific little, you know, empty barbell practice movements, make sure everything's, you know, where it should be, and then get your snatch, then you get your clean and jerk, uh, and then if you front squat, get your front squats in. After you do that, a set of ab wheels and a walk, and you've got a pretty good day. Um, the only thing you might want to drop out for some of us is those extra front squats if you don't need them. Uh, sadly, I always need extra front squat work, so I have to do it no matter what. Um, there is a wonderful what the heck effect from kettlebell swings. Uh, the first time I published an article with kettlebells was called the what the heck effect. It's when I added 70 feet to my javelin throw. I was a weight pentathlon uh, athlete, and I held the American record for a long time. And I've got a funny story about why I don't have the world record, but I, sh that's, eh. but it's a good story. But when I, when I started doing these weird little things like uh, halos and, you know, the goblet squats and prying movements and kettlebell swings, my throws came up. Now, in full honesty, I was also doing at the time easy strength and loaded carries. And which one of the three helped me throw? The best year of my athletic career was at age 47. Uh, and by the way, everyone just talks about, I had a huge discus throw uh, in June of my 47th year uh, at the, uh, was it the Jesse Owens Twilight meet there at the Ohio State University? I think that's what the meet was called. I mean, a big, massive toss. Uh, I mean, we had national level throwers coming over me like, you know, that was a pretty good throw, you know. Um, and what the time I was doing, I was, I was doing basics of kettlebells. I was doing easy strength and I was doing loaded carry because I was doing three things. You can't really pull out and say which one was best because I like, I like the answer of being that all three were the best. Um, I guess if I could go back in time when this magic device, people ask me sometimes, one of the things I wish I would have done earlier in my career was an easy strength approach to Olympic lifting and use the loaded carries to deal with the other issues. But uh, but at least you can get my advice on it too. Oh, the what the heck effect. There's an, uh, um, that word heck is usually another word. I don't use it. It's not hell. I use another four letter word. But it's when you're doing an exercise or a thing 
and over here you all oddly just improve way out of norm so i started doing these kettlebells and my javelin throw went 70 feet farther than my lifetime best so uh, and again there's a picture of me where i'm kind of standing going because I couldn't believe I threw that javelin. Uh, it was a, it was an amazing toss, and that was the what the heck effect. Uh, um, I work with some other people who don't do the traditional sports I know, like swimmers, and the what the heck effect might be the fact that they add an exercise like kettlebells to their to their competitive swimming stuff, and out of nowhere their times drop. How'd that happen? How does how do kettlebell swings help, you know, my swim times? What the heck? So thank you. Fun question. I enjoyed that.